He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. So Jesus came and bore and bared, borne our griefs. He carried our sorrow. He came for us. But then what the Bible says here, yet we esteemed him stricken like, oh, yeah, God's really plaguing him. God's really coming down on him. Yet he was carrying our sorrows and our burdens. Verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Think about that. The Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all, all of our sins. You run down the list of every sin you've ever committed. You probably forgot them. I know I have. I thank God I've forgotten some of them because I don't want to be thinking about those. But if you go back and start scanning your brain for all the things that you've done that you know are wicked and wrong, and you think about every single one of those things was laid upon Jesus Christ. Every one of them. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. With his stripes were healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. The Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before his shears is dumb. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence. Neither was any deceit in his mouth. They made his grave with the wicked. So yeah, the thieves, the people who had actually done wickedly that he was crucified with, that's how he was treated. That's how he was esteemed like he's just some common thief. And not the Son of God, not the Savior of the world. It says, but he had done no violence and neither was deceit. He didn't lie. He wasn't deceitful. Verse number 10, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed he shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Turn to Psalm 22. It's the last place I'll have you turn this morning. But what we see here in Isaiah 53, over and over again, it's saying that he bare our iniquities. I mean, he saw that in probably three or four different verses, multiple ways. He came and bare the iniquities of the world. He came to bear our iniquities, and that's what he was being punished for. And it says it pleased the Lord to bruise him. And that's an interesting verse. It pleased the Lord that he was suffered and afflicted because in his suffering and affliction, our sins were being paid for. By Jesus taking on all of the iniquity of the world, And God punishing, bruising, and, and pouring out his wrath. And we're going to go over that more tonight. On Jesus needed to be done. It was necessary for our salvation, for us to be saved. And I believe that's where it pleased the Lord because in pouring out all of that punishment on Jesus Christ, it allows the door to be open for us to receive forgiveness of sins. Because the payment that he's making is capable of being applied 
to everybody because he bare the sins of everybody. That's a big load. That's a big burden to bear. The sins of the whole world being put on his shoulders. 